insects, whether they be armoured like the rhino or full of teeth and claws like the lions. Uh, hashtag Safari Live on whatever platform you're watching is the best way to get hold of us. Now, you can see he's sort of just contemplating what's going on at the moment, listening carefully. can probably hear my voice. Do you hear my voice, Black Rhino? Yes, I think you do. He's had a nice mud wallow at some point today, so giving him a bit of protection from the biting insects that are out in force at this time of the year in the Mara. They are such incredible beasts. Absolutely wonderful things to watch. Well, JT, congratulations. JT says, this is my first rhino sighting uh, on Safari Live. Well, maybe JT, I'm very happy you are able to share your first rhino sighting with us. It is stunning. Uh, from where I spotted him from quite a long way away, marching along. Matt is wondering, what predators do rhinos have? Now, very few. They're being very big, and obviously having that pointy horn can cause a bit of trouble for any predator that decides to try to take them on. But uh, lions are the only predator that will sometimes uh, take on a wounded rhino or a young rhino. Uh, otherwise, hyenas... Also, again, very unusually might try to take on a wounded um, wounded or, or young animal. But other than that, they are pretty safe from everything else. Sorry, I thought I spotted something. I just popped the binoculars up for a second. Checking down this mucky swamp. The water buck looked a little bit spooked, but I can't see anything there. I think they might have been spooked by some birds taking off. Now, Emma has asked a very interesting question, and that is, why is the black rhino more rare than the white rhino? Now, Emma, in the past, in the 60s and 70s, it was actually the other way around. So, the white rhino was far more rare. The black rhino had histo a historically much larger distribution through far more diverse, diverse sort of habitats. Uh, to the white rhino and uh, they have now now due to poaching and loss of habitats and loss of big wild areas uh, they have lost a lot of that habitat and therefore a loss of their range of course poaching has also played an incredible incredibly large part in their loss of numbers so the black rhino occurred in a far sort of greater area I've got a nice little map to show you, the historical black rhino range. Oh, that's not going to work. Oh, sorry, I pushed the wrong button. Here we go. Okay, so the green is the historical well-known black rhino range. So as you can see, it stays out of the Congo Basin forests and also out of the highlands of Ethiopia. And then across what you call the Sahil region, which is the big savanna region above the Congo Basin uh, forests, all the way through into the Sahara. Now, probably, what am I thinking? Probably 30,000 years ago or so, the Black Rhino Range would have extended right the way into that, what, ooh, darn it, sorry, I keep pushing the wrong button. Um, right the way into the, the what is now true desert in the Sahara. Uh, because that used to be full of grass uh, and it was a, a lush open grass and probably quite similar to what the Kalahari is now. Now, if we go down, oh, this spinning thingy, my Bob, I don't want to search again. Sorry, one second. I keep pushing the wrong spinning button, my fat fingers. Okay, there we go, we're back. Okay, we're back, we're back, we're back. So there we go. Now that is the current black rhino uh, distribution uh, in, in Africa. And you can see it's a lot smaller. That black area up there in West Africa is where they are extinct. Now, fortunately, 
Um, they have been reintroduced into Botswana, Zambia, and Malawi. And uh, there's more than likely probable black rhino still in northern Mozambique. Southern Tanzania, it doesn't show here, but I, I know for a fact that there are no black rhino left in southern Tanzania. I was unfortunately probably one of the last people to ever see a black rhino in the Salu Game Reserve um, before they were unfortunately poached out. But northern Tanzania, Kenya still has. Okay, whoa, the rhino's on the move. Now, of course, Mafuta is asking a question about rhinos and their calves. So Mafuta is wondering why do black rhino calves run behind uh, while white rhino calves run in, run in front? There's a couple of different theories. Um, one of the theories, which I'm not 100% convinced of, is that, well, the black rhino has, which I, I probably think is probably true, has probably better eyesight uh, than white rhino. And... Uh, so the mother is able to see. Now, young rhino calves, as I said, it's a, it's a theory that I, I haven't researched in, in depth enough to, but I think it might be a bit of a tall story, um, that the white rhino calves, when they're younger, their, their heads aren't as heavy, so they're able to lift their heads quite easily and, and see quite well. As a white rhino ages, it says the op optic nerve stretches, uh, therefore it its vision becomes worse as it gets older. So when it's young, its vision is better. Therefore, they run in the front where there's a black rhino. Mother's vision is still quite good. This is, however, a boy. And saw him scent marking from a distance. And he's found some nice little, uh, probably puzzle bush or whatnot to chew on. Lisa's wondering, what is scarier, a charging black rhino or a charging bull elephant? Well, it all depends on the black rhino or the elephant. Uh, in both cases, you can normally stop the charge with a well-aimed shout or bang on the side of your car or clap your hands. Um, I don't know. For me, I'd say probably a, a proper full elephant charge just because they're so much bigger. Um, black rhino charges are incredibly scary, don't get me wrong. I've climbed a few trees to get out of their way in my, my years in the bush. Um, but, oh, difficult. I would probably say that a, a, a big bull elephant in full charge is, is, is more scary. There's a young bull elephant in the background there, as, long, as well as waterbuck. That's quite nice, and this is really nice to see these rhinos right out in the open. And they do like to come down towards the Samaki Swamp at this time of the day. And there are these tiny little puzzle bushes and caper bushes that are growing. And even though it looks like they're grazing grass, they're not. In fact, they are, they are eating bushes that are just popping through, uh, through the grass. So there we go. There we go. Arch has found some bushes growing along. That's exactly what he's after. So the ancestors of both our black and white rhino were already present in Africa about 10 million years ago. Um, and they had a common ancestral species um, that they both diverged from. And of, of course, they, it, it, was, it was quite a easy, not easy, but uh, you can see why the evolutionary uh, diversion from their, their common ancestor happened. So one focused on eating trees and bushes as uh, while the other focused on eating, of course, grass. <laughs> 